Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you all doing? I hope wherever you are, you're doing fine and you're doing well. Despite lockdown, despite isolating, despite all that's going on. I'm doing quite well. Uh, my health is improving and I'm noticing that the problem I have gets a little bit better every day, which is amazing. So I want to thank you guys for all the well wishes and I want to thank you for all the advice as well. I've had such brilliant advice. Thank you, Rebecca, for example, for giving me uh, Dr. John Bergman. I've been really enjoying his videos and I've been putting into practice what he suggests. So diet wise, I have made some changes. I have been doing my Kabal Party breathing, which has been amazing. Last time, I think I said that, oh, by the way, there are quite a few birds here. I don't know if you can hear them. I just moved from the other room and lost an entire recording because, um, well, half of a recording anyway. I didn't start the meditation, thankfully, but um, I just moved room because there was someone doing work in their yard and this really noisy machine cranked up so we had the choice of either loud garden machine tools or birds so in this room we have bird noises but I hope you can hear me um, but yeah I think in last time's video I said that I probably wouldn't get my cabal party breathing routine up to 30 minutes a day guess what I got it up to 30 minutes a day. I did three days of 30 minutes. Uh, I think it was last week. And then I had to take a little bit of a break from it because women have to take a break. Um, you know, at that time of the month, we're not allowed to do these intense breathing exercises. So that is something I wanted to say to you as well, that if you are going to incorporate Kapalpati into your yoga or into your exercise regime be careful with it because um, at certain times you're not allowed to do it and the other thing is if you have blood pressure or if you have an underlying health condition um, you've got to be really careful with it so if you are going to do it do your research do some homework do some googling read up on it and then see if you can bring it into your day because it is very immune boosting so that is a really good thing to be doing at this time to be you know using some of this time to work on your health to work on creating the best health you've ever had and that's what I'm doing and I was watching one of my favorite vloggers she does this these sort of unrelated vlogs it's not spiritual at all it's just this is my life kind of thing and she was saying that she plans to use this lockdown time to really work on her health and be the healthiest she's ever been and I thought yeah that's that's what I'm doing so it's it's going good and it is slow progress it is you know I notice a little bit of progress each day and that's the hallmark of this time astrologically if we look at the astrology of this time and I'll just bring my chart up we've got you know the um the big heavy outer planets I'm just looking here on Wednesday, 8th April, 2020. We've got Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn, Mars all hanging out here in Capricorn. We've got Ketu in the neighborhood as well. Ketu's right next door in Sagittarius. So we've got these big, heavy outer planets. I mean, look at that in Capricorn. You know, life is going to be slow. You know, there's not going to be any sudden changes or sudden movements uh, at all so it, it kind of doesn't surprise me why we've got going on what we've, we've got you know it's um, it doesn't surprise me at all now that I've switched on my outer planets I should say you know having Pluto here is, is you really just go ah oh, okay um, yeah and that's what I've never had my outer planet switched on before. I think I'm really going to start using them now. All right, so I think we'll get into the meditation. 
I feel like I need to close that window because maybe the birds are a little bit noisy. I don't know, that it's the crows. They don't have the nicest sound. Hold on. And the other thing is, I've just heard on the other side, the neighbours are in their garden with some kind of power tool. So it's like everywhere I go in the house, there's just every, every single yard around this house, everyone's in their garden with power tools. So let's just, let's just get on with it. It actually, you know, the content of this meditation, it actually doesn't matter because where we're going in this meditation we're not going anywhere particularly peaceful so it's actually okay you know um, now that I'm thinking about it it's quite all right all right so let's get into this meditation now is this a meditation is this a soul journey is this a process what is this what are we going to do it's a bit of it's a bit more of a process this time guys we're going to do some some work we're in Virgo here so we've got some work to do and so I, I hope this is going to be relaxing. Uh, yeah, I, I hope so. I just came to me the, the concept for this like about half an hour ago, I think. And I'm like, oh, this is an interesting meditation. So this isn't like any of the other ones before. We're going somewhere very different. And it's going to be quite interesting. And the reason I say it's a bit of a process is there are some instructions um that that are gonna come through and you're gonna have to visualize and you're gonna have to feel things and, and it, it is a, a release process we're going to be letting go of a lot of negativity okay um before i begin that's another thing i wanted to say that this time spiritually i've been tuning into some of my favorite spiritual teachers and we are going through a great awakening a mass awakening we are going to get to the other side we are going to things are going to be very good right once we've cleared the fear once we get past this time once we let go of the fear and the negativity and the toxicity once we let go of all of that oh wow some of us are going to experience some beautiful releases into new lives right into new ways of being and it's going to be great okay so a lot of people are going to be very free after this time I do believe that but I think um it, definitely the next oh, I kind of tend to think the next year or two are, are going to be uh challenging still um th there's going to be ch various challenges but you know and I mean we, we've got Saturn in his own two houses for the next five years I mean sort of I've been thinking about this sort of two to five years could it could things be a bit interesting I mean yeah I'm not saying that long for problems I'm I'm even thinking kind of next year should be there should be more positive times for sure um but a lot of us personally especially if you're very spiritual I mean I think we're going to be released into um much better times and feeling freer within ourselves and especially if we work with this time and especially if we listen to this time listen to our to our intuition and make the changes we need to make right if you can make the changes you need to make and you know what those are then it's going to be really good you're going to you know things that things will be good um but yeah, sorry, I'm a bit scattered. Where was I? I think we were just about to start the meditation. But then I brought up my chart. Why did I bring up my chart? Started talking about five years, didn't I? I have been looking at a lot of um, a lot of theories. Some of you, by the way, have brought forward some beautiful theories. Thank you so much for that. And you've been writing them on the comments. Brilliant. Um, you know, yeah there are lots of astrological theories about this time and what it means and, and how it's how it's working so it's really really fascinating and I'm very open-minded about all the theories because there are so many theories there are so many theories about you know how this originated and 
all of that that I find fascinating as well. So I maintain an open mind and I hold on to all concepts loosely, um, which I think is a, a good way of going forward. All right, so should we, I think we should begin the meditation. Look at that, 10 minutes. I've waffled on for 10 minutes. Don't worry, I'll put a jump link. So those of you who want to jump ahead, you can, you can just come right to this bit. All right. So whenever you feel ready, make yourself comfortable. Find a place where you can relax. You can be seated. You can be lying down. You can be on your favorite sofa with your favorite cushion. <laughs> Whatever it is. Maybe you want a little blanket. I don't know. <laughs> but make yourself at home. Relax. Get comfortable. We're going to go on a bit of a journey and we're going to do quite a bit of a process. This is a good process. I'm quite looking forward to this. So as you are going through this process, just relax and let it all happen and trust in the process as well. Just trust that it is happening and that it's happened. Okay. Because we're going to let go of negativity. As I said in the intro, this is, as many spiritual teachers have said, a time of awakening. And this is the most perfect time to be letting go of negativity, okay? Especially at this full moon time. Really perfect time to let go, okay? You've always got a few days either side of a moon event. Don't feel like you have to do it exactly on that day right so with your eyes closed I want you to focus on your breathing take a nice deep breath into your diaphragm nice deep breath in a little pause and then let it go breathe as fully out as you can and slowly really start to unwind and we're going to do another deep breath in hold and then we're going to do a deep breath out and make sure the out breath is slow and longer than the in breath okay so let's let that go we'll do another one and the key is you can either breathe out through your mouth or breathe out through your nose that doesn't matter too much I believe but you want to make the out breath longer than the in breath okay that's the important bit so we're going to do it again deep breath in hold and deep breath out Let it all flow gently out. And as you relax into a natural state of breathing, just let your body breathe. Just watch the natural breathing as it happens. At some point you'll find a nice rhythm. So you focus on your breathing and you can as well tune into your heartbeat. If you can be so physically still that you feel the movement of your heartbeat. That's always a beautiful thing to do in meditation, just to tune in to the heartbeat. Only things that are moving. 
for your breathing apparatus and your heart, right? Just that's the only movement that's happening because you are so still and you're so calm. And as you find your way into that stillness, all you have to do is listen to my voice. There's nothing else to do. There's nowhere to go. This is time for you. This is time to venture within. to be with your own essence which is where all your freedom is it's where all the love is those are the riches of life and that's all within you there's nothing outside you don't need anything outside the outside world doesn't matter right now Everything you really need and cherish and want is within. All right, so just relax. And we're going to go on a journey deep within. Today's journey is very cool and I'm getting to know it myself. I, I just got the idea a little while ago. All right, so... If you've been on a journey with me before, you know that we typically journey via a cloud. Well, today is very different because as you switch on your imagination, you're in the place where you're in. And it's quite extraordinary because a giant tiger that could be the size of a horse, right? So we're talking really big tiger, has just appeared by your side. And he is bowing his head to you. And you're not at all scared, even though that could be scary to have a tiger just appear by your side. But you're not at all scared because he's got his head bowed and you get a strong sense because when your imagination is on, guess what? Your intuition is switched on too. And you get a sense that this tiger is just here to serve you and is very gentle. This tiger couldn't hurt anything even if it tried. It's noble and humble and very sweet. You, you can feel its essence and it, it just feels so sweet, like a child. And you get a sense that you can clamber up onto this tiger's back. And you clamber up onto his back. And his fur is soft and warm. It's not hard. You would think that this fur would be thick or hard, but it's soft. And he purrs a little bit with delight. And you hold on to the scruff of his neck. It's quite amazing. You can just, he doesn't mind. In fact, he wants you to. He wants you to hold on because you guys are going to, be going somewhere and there's going to be some speed involved so you hold on to his skin and you're kind of communicating he's kind of telling you what to do telepathically he's saying hold on and you know intuitively yep, I just grab some of his scruff of his neck and in a flash you pretty much blink your eyes and you're up in the night sky 
and you're flying. You're absolutely flying. And the world beneath kind of disappears. And it's extraordinary because it's the night sky, there are stars, some clouds, wisps of grey cloud. And you're going over the ocean. And you've just gone over this kind of white rim of land. You're not sure what that is, but you've just flown over it. And there are vast seas, like all around, just incredibly vast seas. And you have no idea where you're going. But you're excited. I mean, wow, you're on a tiger's back, right? How often does that happen? And you're holding onto the scruff of this tiger's neck. And the fear is vanishing. Normally you might be a bit frightened in this situation, but honestly, whatever fears, you feel that you've left them behind. You're not afraid of falling off. You're not afraid of the speed. You're not afraid of anything. Everything within you is saying, yes, let's go. This is exciting. You know this is going to be a good trip. And it feels like quite a bit of time has passed. And perhaps you've dozed off a little bit, but you open your eyes in your imagination and you see daylight and you see a new land emerging. And this new land is a bit of a desert. It's kind of like going back to ancient Egypt or something like that. It's, it's just white sand few palm trees but not a lot else and your eyes open into this new scene and you see that there's a kind of city sprawled out in front and it's a beautiful city it, it, it's you know that you've come to a different time in history you're not sure have I gone into the future or have I gone into the past that's not clear because on the one hand things look primitive here but on the other hand you sense that there's advanced technology as well so it's not clear as to what time in history you are in but you see people very well dressed people hard to tell as well is it is it india is it egypt is it you know where is this it's 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 a fascinating mixture of lots of things there's gold that's another feature of you, you kind of see gold everywhere lining buildings and on the edges of steps and in all kinds of extraordinary places, there's gold. And the tiger gently lands. And he walks you up to a building that has these incredible columns, white marble type columns. This building looks like it could be Greek. So again, it's, it's confusing because what era are you in? Where are you? Is this even Earth? None of this is known. But you're okay with that. You're okay with not knowing. What you know is that you're meant to be here. And you're meant to arrive at exactly the time that you've arrived. So within you feel secure, you feel safe, 
and you feel in the know. You feel like there's a lot of unknown, but you know enough, right? You know enough. You know what your intuition is telling you, and that is enough for you. And that's an achievement for a lot of people, right? So the tiger, he kind of moves away. You've clambered off. You see this building with these tall columns and these beautiful steps, white marble steps, with kind of lined with gold. And it's a flight of steps and you know to go up. You go up these steps. And you're greeted by these goddess-like women. Maybe they're angels, maybe they're goddesses. It doesn't matter. And again, this is a place where people aren't really speaking. It's just mental telepathy, right? So they are communicating with you. You are communicating with them. But there's no language being spoken. You just get a sense. You get a knowing. And these women usher you into the building. And there's beautiful light in this building. Absolutely beautiful light coming in from the top. There's a kind of foyer. There are all these rooms, hallways. But there's light coming in from the top. So the ceiling, whatever ceiling they have, is, there's a lot of glass within the structure. It's the most magnificent architecture you've ever seen. It's out of this world. It's like nothing on earth. And the light is phenomenal. And as they walk you through the building, they're telling you that you've entered the healing temple of light. And they're saying, welcome, welcome. They're saying, we were expecting you. You've arrived exactly on time. And you are ready for your appointment and it's a healing that's going to take place it's a healing appointment and they have some instructions to give you these are very important instructions because you're going to heal yourself right other people who come here they come in distressed states. They need to be attended to by somebody else, but not you. You're going to heal yourself. Because you're at such a level that they trust you. They, they want you to, to do the self-healing. Because very likely you're going to heal others. Right? But first you need to heal yourself. So as they walk you through the building, they take you down a flight of stairs. It's a very deep flight of stairs. It takes quite a while to get down to the bottom. You get a sense that you're going deep underground. And this beautiful marble flight of stairs, it's a kind of creamy color in there. And there are these beautiful lamps the lamps are lit it's a sort of golden fire in all these lamps absolutely beautiful and as you walk down this flight of stairs they explain to you where they're taking you and they are taking you to where the akashic records for your life and for your lifetimes where they've been written down and they've been written down all these Akashic records in these leather bound books and that's what they're taking you to they're taking to you to your room where your Akashic records are all written down and they're explaining that there are so many leather bound books in there that over time it has become dusty. It's a lot of dust. And they explain that it's good that you've arrived 
because now your presence, in your presence, that dust won't be able to exist. It's going to disintegrate. So your presence, you going deep into that room that would be scary for most people, but not you, right? You want to do this. You're like, yeah, I, I want to let go of my negativity. I want to clear up my life. I want to let go of blockages. And they're telling you that all that will go. It's the dust. It's the dust that's collecting on all those Akashic records that's obscuring the light of your life. And they're explaining all you need to do is walk into that room and a process will happen. The dust will fly up. It will swirl around you and it will burst. It will disintegrate. It will vanish. And you keep walking down these stairs and you are thinking, do I want to do this? And you think, yes, I do want to do this. And you're feeling grateful. You're feeling, thank God I'm here. Thank God I'm going to do this. I'm ready to let go of my negativity. I'm ready to let go of any blockages that are in my life. They also explain to you, you don't need to know what the negativity is, what the blockages are. Just hold the intention that all my negativity is going to clear. What no longer serves me is going to clear. And one of these angel-like goddesses, she pulls out some protective equipment for you. So you will need to wear a mask around your face for your nose and mouth. You will also need to wear a special pair of glasses. And these glasses are kind of like what builders use. Yeah, it's proper protective equipment. They've got a covering for your head. It's made of cotton and that just protects your ears. But that's all you need. And they hand that over. And you're now walking down a corridor. And they unlock the door to your room. And as you step into that room with your protective gear on. You feel so at home. You feel the most you that you've ever been. It's just incredible that this is you. This is all your information. This is all your lifetime of memories. This is you. This is you. This is you. This is you. Everything is known to you. It's just, it's a bit overwhelming. It might even bring some tears to your eyes. But it feels good, right? You, you've got a knowing. You're like, wow. This is who I am. And this is who I've been. This is who I'm going to be. This is, this is all me. You turn around, the door is closed. The angels have left you. They know that you're fine. You know that you're fine. And they've given you the instruction that all you have to do is stand in the center of the room. And when you do that, the dust is going to start to swirl around. So get ready, walk into the middle of that room and just stand there. And as you stand there, you can start to see this kind of etheric, sparkly sort of dust. comes off those leather bound books somehow it's coming from within the pages out of the pages everywhere it's just within that room somehow all this strange sparkly cosmic dust starts to swirl around you and it swirls and it swirls around you you can really feel the momentum of it it swirls, it swirls, it swirls. You may even close your eyes. It might feel uncomfortable. 
It's all your negativity. It's all, your negativity is just kind of swirling around you. But remember what the angels said. They just said, just stand in the middle of the room and hold the intention that I'm letting go of my negativity. I'm letting go. I'm letting go. I'm letting go. And you just keep repeating, I'm letting go. I'm letting go. I'm letting go. And the negativity swirls, the cosmic dust swirls, it swirls, it swirls, it swirls, it swirls, it swirls, it swirls. And it crescendos, it rises up and it just bursts like fireworks, purple fireworks kind of all around you. And there's a cool purple light all around you that's burst all around you. It feels incredible. It feels absolutely incredible, this purple explosion of light. And you're in the middle of it and it feels amazing. This cool purple light bursts around you. And you get a sense that it's done. Maybe you blink a bit, you look around. Everything looks sparkling clean and new. You breathe in deeply. You let it all go. You've done it. You've cleared all your negativity from all the past, from the now, from the future. It's done. You've done it. You've cleared it. And it feels fantastic. Inside you feel, oh, I, wow. I'm free. I'm really free. I'm free to be me. I'm free to be me for eons. It just feels incredible. And it's that feeling, that one feeling that you've traveled lifetimes to feel. That's what all those leather bound books around you contain. They contain these lifetimes where you're trying to be free. But you always are. Now you know that, and now you know that in a deep, deep way. In every fiber of your being, in every cell of your being, you know that you're free. And you're elated. You know that you can go anywhere. You know you could live a thousand, hundred million more lifetimes, create a hundred million more leather bound books in that room. And you know the secret, that you're always free. All you have to do is go within. And you can sense the angel-like goddesses, they're, they've come back. They're outside the door, they open the door. And they give you a bit of a nudge, they say, step aside, step aside. Move, move, move. So you move a couple of steps. It's a good thing that you do because a shell drops from the center of the ceiling. It's a full shell, like from the sea, from the ocean. And as it drops, it smashes open on the floor. And it's incredible because there's a pearl inside. And the angels motion to you, they say, that's your pearl. Take it. That's for you. And you pick up the shell and it's broken pieces. And you hold that pearl in your hand. And it, it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. And you look at the angels, are you sure I can have this? And they smile and say, yes, that's yours. Keep it. And it 
It's so magical. You take the pearl, put it in your pocket, and you know that it's time to go. And the angels take you back up that flight of stairs. They ask you how it went. And you tell them, I feel amazing. I really feel a shift. I feel, I feel healed. I feel like I'm ready to go back to the world and they give you some advice telepathically they say look you're going back to a troubled earth right now it's not the easiest place to be but you can always come back to the healing temple and they say that before you sleep at night just ask I want to go to the healing temple or the Temple of Light. It goes by various names, but you can always ask, I want to go to the Healing Temple, the Temple of Light, the Healing Temple of Light. Any of these names, just ask, just hold that intention before you sleep each night or whenever you feel the need and you can come back in your dreams. And there are many places in the Healing Temple. There are angels and goddesses and gods who will work on you they'll work on your energy field they'll work on certain things that you're trying to heal they will they will work with you just ask okay so you can always come back and these angels they escort you back they escort you outside your tiger is waiting your tiger wakes up from a nice sleep he's had a good time and you clamber on his back you latch on to the scruff of his neck you wave bye to the angels and you feel that pearl in your pocket and you smile knowing that you have a place to go any time you like and as you fly back to your place on the earth you remember the wise words of those angels they say any time things get a bit tough just ask to come to the healing temple and then go to sleep and it will happen in your dreams you will journey again you will go there And you will be able to be restored in whatever way you need. So we've come to the end of our healing journey. I hope you enjoyed that process. I hope its effects last. And remember, if you need to do the process again, you can. And remember, you can go personally to that healing temple anytime you choose it's it's a real place you can look up the works of Dolores Cannon she talks more about it there are many spiritual teachers and advanced people who who describe such places And you can either come back and open your eyes or you can carry on into sleep and restfulness. So I wish you well. Take care. And I'll see you next time.